In this video, I want to discuss the molecular orbitals that result from interactions of p orbitals. So thus far, we've introduced molecular orbitals, but all of the examples that we've done have been with uh, electrons that are in s orbitals, right? So the parent atomic orbitals were always s orbitals. For H2, it was the 1s, right? And then we looked at lithium dimer and beryllium dimer. Both of those were 2s orbitals that were forming the molecular orbitals. So what happens when we get to a point where we have to start considering p orbitals interacting with one another? Well, let's look at an example to find out what happens, right? So this is the boron dimer, B2, right? So another homonuclear diatomic. So what, what we have here in the figure are the three mutually perpendicular P orbitals, right? So if we were to kind of draw axes here, let me say this is the uh, Y axis. This is the X axis and this is the Z axis. Actually, let's, uh, let's make this the Z axis make this guy the x-axis right so we've got x y and z axis here right and so these are going to be the orbitals that will be involved in any type of bond that boron forms right um or any p orbitals so um so we have these three different orbitals that we have to consider so there are going to be three different interactions that we have to take into account and those three different interactions are shown here. So there will be a parallel interaction between the two y, uh, PY orbitals, right? So this will be the two PY orbitals, right? And so this is going to be a pi interaction here, right? That parallel interaction between the orbitals is going to be a pi interaction. Same thing here with the two PX orbitals, right? This is also going to be a pi interaction. And here with this direct overlap between the two PZ orbitals, that's going to be a sigma interaction. Right. So in this case, we get three different interactions. We get two pi interactions and we get a sigma interaction between these two P orbitals. Right. And this would go for any P orbitals. Right. 3P, 4P, 5P, what have you. Right. Um, these P orbitals coming together would form these three interactions right so let's look at what the molecular orbital diagram would look like for uh for b2 or let's just take just say for any uh two p orbitals coming together so not really a full molecule just yet so let's say we got two p orbitals here right we got three two p orbitals here and we got three two p orbitals here right so we've got to consider these two different interactions, right? Or these three different interactions, right? So we know that we will have a sigma bonding orbital, right? So we'll call this the sigma 2p, right? This is a sigma orbital that, that uh, results from direct overlap between the 2p orbitals. Right. But we've also got these two pi interactions and they're actually going to be the exact same energy. So the splitting would look like this. So we'll have one. Uh, we'll have these two pi orbitals that are at the same level on the MO diagram. Right. So this guy would be pi 2p. And this guy would be pi 2p. OK. So we're not actually done just yet, because remember, we have to have the same number of molecular orbitals as we have atomic orbitals. We're starting off with six atomic orbitals, and we've only accounted for three molecular orbitals. To fix this, we're going to have antibonding orbitals for each one of these bonding interactions, right? So these guys are going to come together. Each of them are going to have a constructive and destructive interaction. And so that means we're going to have antibonding orbitals here as well. So here we'll put our antibonding pi orbitals and we have the antibonding sigma orbital. Right. So this guy would be sigma star 2p. This would be pi star 2p. And this one would also be pi star 2p, right? So this is what it looks like when 2p orbitals come together. You take into account these three unique interactions, right? So you've got one sigma interaction and two pi interactions. 
you put those on the molecular orbital diagram and their antibonding equivalents, right? Now, in this case, the sigma star 2p is higher in energy than the pi star 2p. That's actually going to change. And we'll talk about scenarios where that changes in the next few lectures. But, um, but just know that this uh, ordering can change. But in general, your sigma star 2p is going to be higher in energy than the pi star 2p. Okay, so in the next video, we'll look at how these can change and look at full um, electron configurations that include this 2p splitting.